Greetings. Welcome in the name of Christ. Welcome to our worship this morning, our virtual worship. We're speaking to you from the past again. My name is Josh Lindy Whitler. I am the director of Children, Youth, and Families here at St. Matthew's Methodist. And it's a pleasure to be with you all on the journey this morning. Kids, adults maybe, if you have brought your backpacks to church this morning, uh, if you have that, I hope you're prepared for the journey ahead and for where we've come. And adults, I don't know if you brought your candles or not, but if you did, you can get them out. And what we'd like to do is light them together this morning if you have a candle. If you don't, it's okay. But if you have it this morning, I thought it would be an opportunity for us to remember that the light of God is with us wherever we are. We don't have to be in this building together. We all carry the love and the life and the light of God with us wherever we are. So I brought my candle. And if you have your candle and you have it to light, go ahead and light it now and wherever you may be, and just take a moment to think about the love that surrounds us, even in this moment. Some of you have family and we're fighting off kids right now, I don't know. Some of you are in the chat box with us. Some of you are watching us well into the future. Wherever you might be right now, think of just the gift of love that surrounds you right now, that reminds you of the presence of God in our lives. And also take a moment to remember that that gift of love is you yourself, the community that you give, the value that you bring. And so we shine each other's light. We shine the love of God wherever we may be. And as we come together, we remember this. And we are together in a strange way, but we are still together. So come, welcome, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter where you are in your life, in your journey and faith with God, we are all welcome in this place of worship this morning. Jesus says, come to me, everyone, So let us dance when Christ plays a joyful tune. Let's weep when he sings a lament. When the Spirit chants for justice, let's follow her lead. Let us pray. Come to us, Holy One, and immerse us in the beauty of life with you. Come to us, Holy One, and enliven our community with the intensity of your love. Come to us, Holy One, and embolden our community with the urgency of your justice. In the name of the one who calls us to play and to work in community, Jesus, our beloved. Amen. Oh, 
Okay. Well, we're off to Dolan Pond in the rain. We're hoping that we're not going to get too much. Uh, the big storms aren't going to come. Yeah, I love lightning bolts. Do you know what we're looking for? Have I told you what we're looking for? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're looking for stones. Let's find our rocks quickly. We definitely got caught in the rain. That one's already got a message on it. Hope Grace Patience. Oh, that, that. Okay, I didn't have enough rocks. Yeah, we should have brought our raincoats, huh? <laughs> All right, well. I guess we're stuck in the gully wash. We're got stuck in the gully wash. Welcome everybody to our somewhat messy house and our messy living room. It's COVID life. Hi Jojo, how are you doing today? Have you had a good day today? Did you enjoy going out into the crazy rain yeah. a little bit ago? Okay, so I have something here and you all at home are gonna help us uh, act this out. So Jojo, I need you to be my actor. Are you ready to be my actor? Okay, I'm very right. good at acting. Oh yes, you are. This I'll is, the what screen. is this called? A backpack. Okay, so put on the backpack, and everybody at home, if you don't have a backpack, just kind of walk around the house like you've got a backpack on, or just kind of where you're standing, just kind of walk around. <laughs> now, what are backpacks good for? Carrying things! Like what? What do you carry in backpacks? Rocks. <laughs> in our case, yes. But, you know, if you're in school, what might you put in the backpack? Oh, lunch! Lunch or books? Can you overload your backpack to where it's too heavy? Yeah. Show me what it looks like to walk around, and you at home do it as well. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, oh no, that's pulling on you. Oh, it's so heavy. Okay. Oh, hey, careful there. All right, so do you, Jojo, do you know what an expectation is? No. You don't know what an expectation is? It's a yes. big word. Do you all know what expectation means? An expectation is when somebody wants you to do something. It's what other people want us to do. And sometimes these things can be good, like parents have lots of expectations for us. But expectations can be like weights, like rocks. They can fill, they can be heavy. Sometimes they're not so heavy and they're good for us, like eat healthy food. Right? Try to go to bed on time. Go to bed on time. All right, so these don't weigh down my backpack too much, but let's find some bigger rocks here. And let's think about things that are kind of good, but can be bad if we, uh, if we make them too big. Like, get good grades. How about this? Have lots of friends. Uh, yeah, so things that can be good can also be bad. Now, let's get these big rocks out and think about the Wait, things that really aren't that good. It might be like, buy, 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 as many things as you can, right? And use, use, use as many things as you can and dispose of it and it doesn't really matter if it hurts the earth. All right, so carry around, you got your backpack, you got all your expectations, let's carry this around. How does that feel? Now let's pretend it's super, oh, Millie does not like it. Okay, you're my, you're my expectation, you're my burden. Let's carry it, oh, goodness, it feels heavy. Oh, oh my goodness, this is a hard journey. It can be hard to walk around. My back hurts. What does it feel? Show me your back hurting. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, these are also called burdens. Burden is maybe another way to call expectation. Jesus says, my burden is light. What does that mean? It means that all the, even the good things, but also especially those bad things, we don't need them in this, if we have this one. It's this one. Show it? Yeah, go and show it to the screen. There it is. That's our love stone. And the love stone tells us that we need love in our lives. And Jesus tells us that when we have the love of God with us, then all the good things come with us anyway. And all the things that aren't so good, we can... We don't, they don't burden us in the same way. So this is what we need. This is the thing that we should take with us. We take this and this will be our guide. Now let's walk around. Now we're ready for our journey. All right, are you all 
at home ready to go on a journey with us? Are you ready to go on a journey? Yeah. Okay. Take love with you wherever you go, and let's journey together. You ready? Perfect. Okay. Let's go. Ah! Ah! Millie's ready. Okay. Ah, Millie can go with us. Let's go this way. A reading from Psalm 145, verses 8 through 19. Let us pray together as we hear these ancient words. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words, and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. 
You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. This is the word of God for all. Thanks be to God. A second ago, we heard the hymn, Come Thou Fount, which makes a reference to an Ebenezer, which in Hebrew means stone of help. It was after a big battle between the ancient Israelites and the Philistines where the prophet Samuel put an Ebenezer as a marker to help the people remember that it was God who liberated them, God who brings freedom. For thousands of years across many cultures, stones have always been used as markers to remember. So this morning we place our Ebenezer. By your help we've come, and as your pilgrim people we hope, by your good pleasure, safely to arrive and be welcomed home. The Gospel reading today comes once again from the book of Matthew, this time from chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. Hear now the words of Jesus. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal himself. Come to me, all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of God to us this morning. Let us take a moment now to pray together and prepare our hearts to receive the Spirit of God in whatever form she takes. Amen. Let us not forget, we are a pilgrim church, subject to misunderstanding, to persecution, but a church that walks serene because it bears the force of love. These are the words of Oscar Romero, the El Salvadorian archbishop, prophet, and martyr. We're a pilgrim church that walks serene because it bears the force of love. That's the yoke that Jesus is talking about with his disciples. Two weeks ago, the last time I was with you all on a Sunday morning, we talked about discipleship as a journey that we're all on. It's the road that we make by walking, by learning as we go, we learn by doing, because the mission is the same across time and across place, but the time and the place is different. And we have to pay attention to what we call the signs of the times, and allow the Spirit to guide us in our mission. And if we do that, well, it takes the pressure off of us to be perfect, to have it all figured out ahead of time, because we won't be as afraid to try new things, to go new directions, because we're learning as we go along the way. I can hear my type A personalities going a little, getting a little fidgety right now, but that, you know, it's okay, it'll be all right. But we learn as we go, and we do have some guidance along the way. 
This morning's passage asks us to return to the idea of how we take this journey in our time and place. How are we to be the living, active hands and feet of Jesus in the world right now? Oscar Romero is somebody who could teach us a thing or two about this. If you're not already familiar with his story, he was installed as the Archbishop of San Salvador in the late 70s because it was believed that he was so conservative and so mild-mannered and so humble that he would just maintain the status quo. And then, among other events, his good friend, Father Rutilio Grande, was murdered in cold blood by the military junta who ruled El Salvador with an iron fist, who received money and weapons from the United States government because they were viewed as fighting communists. And so Romero, being a person of faith, had to decide what to do. How was he going to walk this journey before him? And with the Spirit's guidance, he became a voice for the voiceless. He began to preach against the violence of the government and called for their repentance on national radio. He tried to broker peace between various insurrectionist groups and the government. He, throughout the time, he invoked the power of love, the force of love. At times, he called it the violence of love. Indeed, let us not forget, as he said, we are a pilgrim church, subject to misunderstanding, to persecution, but a church that walks serene, because it bears the force of love. Eventually, Romero's words got him killed by his own government, in the middle of a worship service, no less. But he was transformed from bystander to witness to the oppression of his own people. If we're trying to follow the way of Jesus in our time and place, we're all we, it'll be different, but we're all going to reach moments, forks in the road, where we're going to have to decide what to do, where to go, with the Spirit's help. We're going to have to do this multiple times in our lives, actually. When we do, when we come to these decision moments, will we fall in line with the status quo? Will we do what's easy? Will we say that we've arrived? We've done, we're done growing and learning. We don't, we're, we're good where we are. We don't have to go a new scary direction. Or will we put up an Ebenezer, give thanks to God for where we've been, pray, and then follow the way of the crucified one? Come to me, all who are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Pastors love this passage. <laughs> It's like, oh boy, easy sermon week. Because it's a great, it feels great to say, come, give, give me your burdens, I will give you rest. The problem is, is that this passage is smack dab in the middle of Matthew. And Matthew doesn't mince words. If you remember, the author of Matthew from a couple of weeks ago loves reminding us just how serious this discipleship business is. This crazy mission of the church, which is the mission of St. Matthew's, to open our hearts to the Spirit to dare to embody God's love for the transformation of the world? Not that easy. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I'm sure you all remember what a yoke is. Um, Insert dad joke here about having eggs for breakfast this morning. A yoke is a big wooden beam that fits around the neck of oxen or other animals so that they can pull a cart or a wagon together. You don't see a lot of them around these days or in this time and place at least, but Hopefully you've seen the image before. And what does it mean for Jesus' disciples who are listening? Uh, well, there's a lot of symbolism being invoked here, actually. More than we can get into this morning. Stuff from Deuterocanonical texts and Roman culture and Hebrew scripture. Just going to focus on a few here. First, the word yoke was often a way to describe a relationship between a rabbi, a teacher in those days, and the disciple, the students. To follow a rabbi was to take on the yoke of that rabbi. You know how the yoke requires the two animals to be in lockstep to follow each other, to almost 
do what the other, they have to do things together. So you would have disciples that would follow their rabbis and literally do everything that the rabbi was doing from the way that they combed their hair to the way they brushed their teeth and dressed. I'm exaggerating here, but it basically do everything that the rabbi would do down to the jot and the tittle. The disciples and the early Christians carried on this meaning. We say that there's a passage in, in Paul, be imitators of Christ. There's a passage uh, there's about the, being the hands and the feet of Christ in the world, being the body of Christ. These ideas are, keep that notion of imitation going. Thankfully, the church doesn't ask us to all comb our hair and dress and act like Jesus in that way, because <laughs> that would be almost impossible now, um, even if it was desirable. But it's really about following the way of Jesus, where Jesus would go, what Jesus would do. What did he do? Healed people, he ate with them, ate with the oppressed and the powerful. He called out authorities. He prayed. So when Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, that word, learn, is actually the word disciple. It's disciple after me. This is what he's asking. Follow my way. Do my mission. That's one notion of the word yoke. It's expectation upon us to follow this way as followers of Christ. But there's a second meaning. There's a second, really, it's a second dimension of the same meaning. And that's the word, use of the word yoke in the prophets, such as Isaiah, to talk about the bondage of oppression and the way that God would work in the world, wants to work in the world to break that bondage. Again, if we had the time this morning to really get into detail about how those are two sides of the same coin and how the spiritual and the political interact, that would be a great Bible study. We'll save that for later. We'll just say for now that Jesus is not just asking his disciples to imitate him in, uh, in, in just kind of a rote way, because the actions and the words that he, Jesus was saying flew in the face of the spiritual and the political powers of the age. By that we can see he's asking his disciples to create a new community, one that transcends tribe and national identity. He even refers to it as a kingdom, a kingdom of God. We talk about it as a kingdom, and we can miss the irony that is being invoked there. He's critiquing empire when he calls his kingdom a kingdom, because there's a reason why feminist and womanist scholars now have changed the word to kingdom, and we have learned from that because the, it reminds us of that double meaning, that irony, uh, but it helps us remember that a kingdom is a little bit different. It's not controlled by a patriarchal line or a matriarchal line. It's not a hierarchy where some people are more important than others. There's no segregation. It's not a meritocracy where you can earn your way. It's not a place where you can achieve uh, value. It's not a community where people's value is dictated by what they consume. No, it's a community where love is the rule. Love is the currency, where the equal dignity and sacredness of all human beings is honored, and all gifts of the creator are stewarded and protected. The gifts of our earth. It's a community that we can really only see glimpses of right now. Sometimes only rarely. But in the spirit, the yoke of our faith, the way of Jesus, we seek to make this vision, this mission, more and more concrete, real. If it sounds like hard work, yeah, in a sense it is. Because Jesus isn't just saying, run free. We have a twisted notion of what freedom is. The idea that you can become a Christian and now you're good to go, you can live however you want, that's not freedom. The idea that the world is your oyster, that's not freedom. Jesus, in fact, doesn't really mince words about people who claim to know God, but whose actions or inactions benefit from the poor and do not reflect God's radical love for all people. Jesus does ask us to bear a yoke. The yoke idea is another little ironic reversal there. So we're bearing a yoke, but it's Jesus's yoke. It's not an oppressive yoke. It's Jesus's way, the way of the force, the burden of love. That's not going to look the same for everyone. 
It's not going to look the same in every time and place. But it does ask something of us to respond in faith. When we get to those fork in the road moments in the journey. We come to these moments at various times, again and again. And these moments, we might be asked to leave some burdens behind, as we talked about last week. Things that we want to release or let go, or two weeks ago. And there might be things that that we've learned along the way, and there might be things that we want to recommit to. Recommitting to the yoke, bearing that yoke, the yoke of Jesus. Maybe as a community, we're at a moment like that right now. Maybe as a society, that's where we are. What would be the choice of love in this day and time? When we reach that moment in the road, what's the loving way? You know, in seasons of change, seasons that feel kind of chaotic, tumultuous, the temptation, human temptation, can be to postpone that kind of mentality, to postpone the mission for a little bit, to worry for the time being about the more base concerns, like survival, preservation, fear management, keeping those around us happy. That's a real thing in COVID life, keeping kids from bouncing off the walls. That's a real problem. But that can be our focus. Or maybe just we want, we're okay with being blissfully unaware of the suffering of others. Or we see the suffering of others on TV and on the media, and we say, this is all this craziness. Everybody's saying different things. I don't know what to believe anymore. Why can't everything just be simple again? I'm just going to turn it all off. I get that, by the way. I think we all do. That's not freedom. It would be nice if COVID never happened. Of course, if we all were yoked to each other, to compassion, just a little bit more, maybe we wouldn't be in such a mess right now. But even before COVID, we weren't really free then either. Let's be honest. One of the things we're learning right now, especially those of us who are white privileged, and speaking generally on this July 5th, when you're watching. Black and brown persons in this country have only experienced glimpses of that freedom of equality. Rare glimpses. And those glimpses of the kingdom, thankfully, have been enough to sustain a struggle with at least some semblance of hope. But white persons haven't been free either. White people lose when we're segregated when our fellow human beings are caged, dehumanized, branded as criminals. In fact, psychologists, many psychologists, believe that being an unengaged bystander to the traumas of our world actually has an impact on us. That there is a relationship between the social evil and the, 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 the effect that it has on our hearts and our minds and our souls. The truth is there's no such thing as freedom from our obligation to others. Because we're social creatures, it's how we're made. The idea of freedom is a myth. Jesus' call wakes us up to this. If we try to put that off, it actually leads to much, much, much heavier burdens, expectations, yokes. But Jesus offers the pilgriming church a light yoke for the journey, the yoke of real freedom a yoke of love, generosity, compassion, solidarity that seeks the good of all. A yoke that turns competition into sharing, guns into farm tools. That inclination to take, 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 and use, 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 and to nurture, helping to grow. It's the way of Jesus. Again, we learn as we go. We, we don't have a roadmap, usually. But we do have a compass, if I may push the metaphor a little bit. Or we might say we have Ebenezer's, that others and we have left along the way. 
and they point. They show us where God has walked with us in the past, and they point us into the future. So I think right now, in this tumultuous season of change for our community, for the world, that's exactly when we want to be pressing even more deeply into who we are as a community, a missional community that is not defined by this building, by our leaders, by our perceived importance or relevance, by our wonderful music, our programs, or our incredible volunteers even. Those things only have value in the kingdom so far as they embody, they incarnate God's love for the transformation of us and the transformation of the world. So that's the compass, love. It's not assurance. It allows us to take steps of faith, to dare to dream. Not everything's going to be revealed to us, but we can take that next step. What is the loving thing to do now? Remember Romero. Will we fall in line with the status quo? With the call of power or say that we've arrived, that we don't have any more changing or learning or growing to do? Or will we, the pilgrim church, raise our Ebenezer and remember and give thanks for where we've come and pray and then follow the way of the crucified one, walking serene, bearing the force of love. May this hymn be our prayer of response. God of the movements and martyrs, and martyrs God of the powerless child God of the hurt and the hopeless and unreconciled God of the just and the faithful God of the night and the day God of the whole of creation, in your name we pray. Many have followed the Savior into the face of the storm. Strengthened by long generations, by love they were formed. In basements of tall steeple churches, Shadows of fences and walls In alleys and halls and hallways of power They answered your call Now it's our turn to do justice Humbly we rise to the day Give us the strength and the wisdom to your way Gather the loaves and the fishes to Share until all have been fed Walk in compassion and mercy By love will be led Standing in circles surrounding All holding hands while we pray When powers bear down Helpless will stand in the way. God, God of the worn and the wounded, let us be healed by the truth. When doorways are blocked, we will lower our friends through the room. God of the circle that God of the ones pushed away We will reach out to our neighbors And your name will say No matter your creed or your country No matter the hue of your 
skin Your age, who you love, or the body your soul was born in No matter the places you're broken No matter the things you have done Lay down that weight on the altar A new day's begun are a child of the maker you are beloved and known join us in work of the kingdom we welcome you home join us in work of the kingdom we welcome you Thank you all again for your responses last week to that question of what are we taking with us and what are we releasing on the journey ahead. I noticed a lot of really interesting themes, really wonderful themes in a lot of your responses. Seeing and reaffirming the God in me. Remembering the power of community. And the gift of community. Being flexible. That's a good one. The creativity that we've learned. Remaining open. Sharing the gifts that we have. even in the challenges of life, finding blessing. These are marks of our wisdom, our shared experiences of walking this journey together. These are wonderful gifts that we have been given. We also have some things that we are trying to let go of. A loss of sense of purpose. Sometimes we can be impatient Sometimes we need to let go of that, our impatience. Sometimes we're just busy. So sometimes, maybe all, a lot of the time. Sometimes we feel lonely. Sometimes we have doubts. And not just doubts in God, but doubts in our own abilities, our own capacity. Can God use us? Worry. This is a lot of wisdom here. And we put it all here, including the things that we release, because all of it is part of our journey. We bring our whole selves before God in prayer. We bring our whole selves before God as we journey together as a community. Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. That idea of rest is not just to deny our rough edges. It's to release our need to control, our need to repress. It's acceptance of who we are, warts and all, before God, before each other so that they're not a weight anymore. Surrounding our journey, it's a part of our journey, is the life in which we live, the world in which we are in, and all the joys and the concerns that come with that. And God's light is in those things, can be found in those things. And so now, as we enter into a, continue in a spirit of prayer, really, we want to remember the things that we lifted up in the chat last week. And then when I finish reciting these prayers from last week's chat, again, we will have 
as we've been doing the last couple of weeks, a little time of silence. And I will continue to light the candles on this outer ring. And as we do, pray for each other. Use the chat box as a moment to pray for each other. And when somebody shares a prayer, if somebody could respond, this is our prayer. That way we can pray for each other in this time, both now in the past and you're now in the present when you're watching. So let us pray together. We pray in this moment for all who are facing the effects of COVID-19 spread, especially those in Arizona and Florida and Texas and elsewhere where the cases are surging again, and especially for our Black, Indigenous, and Latinx neighbors who are far more likely than whites to be hospitalized for COVID-19. Help us to use the pain and isolation that we're in now to have compassion that moves in us to act, to make changes in our social structures that have kept people isolated for years. More closer to home, we pray for Dennis Michaud's family, Sarah Jean, Harper, and Arlen, that his family and all who love Derek and loved him feel God's infinite love. For Andrea Bonner's niece, Lillian, and her family, as she and her husband are transitioning to guardianship of her nephew's son. For Andrea's sister-in-law, Betty, as she awaits the test results of her husband, who has Alzheimer's. For Sheila, Sheila Lauer, who is making slow progress in her healing from severe burns. For Ruth, Ruth Webb, Donna Yost's mom, who underwent surgery on Monday. We pray for her family and her caregivers as well. And for all those in our community who we continue to lift up in prayer. Finally, we add that on this Independence Day weekend, we remember this country's highest ideals, even as all of us have yet to reach those ideals of freedom and justice for all. We pray that we can untwist these notions of freedom and justice from around our own self-focus to open these possibilities up for all. We also want to acknowledge that this land that we are on right now is the land that we live on, it's, it was not always our land. It belongs to God. And for thousands of years, it was inhabited by Nipmunk and other nations before it was colonized by Europeans. So we acknowledge our community's full history, along with our full selves and all the places that we come from and our ancestors. We accept these things and we offer them to God as our full selves. These are our stories. Continue to pray with me in the chat box and in your hearts. These are our stories, our lives, our histories. These are our prayers.
Let us continue to pray. Almighty God, in your eyes, a nation is neither favored nor foreign. You are the sole creator and sovereign judge of us all. We pray that our nation would not dare approach you as if you were our own patron and protector, yet we boldly approach you as something much more, our God and Savior, seeking the assurance of your presence and the guidance of your Spirit. On this holiday weekend, teach us to love not only the land on which we live, but also the people who live on it and the people who have been barred from it. And help us remember and honor those whose lands have been taken from them. Lead us in the knowledge that love of country can coexist with love for the world. We pray for your entire world and all its peoples, especially we lift to you those who are in need, those who are suffering, those whose lives are subject to the whims of others. Those people are not just in faraway places, but are ever so near. We pray for the sick and the dying, for those whose lives are filled with hope at the promise of healing and wholeness, and for those who feel cut off from all promise. With gratitude, we trust your promises, and we hold before you those whose lives are closely linked with our own and our own needs. We pray a special prayer for Pastor Jinu, Haywan and Joshua, as they prepare for this next stage in their journey. Even as we look forward to walking with them and to having Jinu shepherd and guide us, we acknowledge that your church is a people and that your mission is a community, a community of transformation. We pray that we might bless each other and that by coming together, the faithfulness and compassion that has been manifested in our community, as well as in Jinu's life and ministry, might be magnified all the more. Take our desires for greatness, O God, and turn them into prayers for goodness. Take our clamoring for success and turn them into prayers of service so that we in all things might glorify you, our God, even as we honor you in Christ, who taught us to pray in simplicity, in faith, to dissenter ourselves and to center your kingdom on earth. We pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. peace of Christ be with you. If you're near somebody, go ahead and exchange the peace of Christ with them now. If you're in the chat room, go ahead and exchange the peace of Christ with each other as we listen to this song together about love.
right. Well, uh, here we are. Uh, again, welcome, Janu. Thank you so much for you, uh, taking the opportunity to talk with me. Um, I get the privilege to have a little conversation with you here, and I know that um, everybody at St. Matthew's is really looking forward to get to know you more. So I thought we'd start off and just ask a few questions and maybe give you a little bit of a chance to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, who you are. And I know you'll get, you're looking forward to get to knowing us and we'd love to get to know more about you. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi everyone. My name is Chinu, Chinu Chan. Yeah, I'm your new pastor. I'm so thrilled to have this opportunity to serve God and God's people with you all. Uh, we don't know the, all the details yet, but I'm sure God will lead us as we pay attention to Holy Spirit's directions and we will find some ways, you know, the ways that we can uh, imitate Jesus Christ. Uh, so for now, uh, thank you very much, Josh, for this opportunity so that uh, I know you have prepared uh, several questions to ask me and then I'll answer to that. So there we go. Let's, let's, let's do it. <laughs> okay, well, we'll give it a try. So my, my really, um, we'll, we'll see how, these, how they go. Um, well, it's just a simple question to start. Well, it's not so simple, actually. It's actually quite complex because, as you might know, there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> the world is crazy right now. Um, you know, some of it is good. It may, looks like that some progress is being made in, in some areas relating to, to, to racism and social justice in our world. But there's a cost to that, and there's people that are trying to figure out what that looks like, and there's people who are really concerned about that. Um, there's a lot of concern anytime you're talking about institutional change. Mm -hmm. um, there's concerns about this crazy thing called COVID that we've been dealing with for a while already. <laughs> um, you know, our world seems kind of upside down. Um, and we've, as a church, have been kind of soldiering through it. But of course, we just, uh, you know, we're in the midst of a, a transition here with, uh, with, uh, with, with you coming in and with Steve and Beth leaving. And we're so excited that you're here. But it's been a challenging time and a tumultuous time for not just us, but for you and for your church and for the, com the world. <laughs> I'm conflating a lot of things here. But my question really is, what's something that God has taught you or shown you in the midst of your, uh, how you're experiencing this time right now? I believe uh, God is calling God's people to make uh, changes with our experienced compassion. Did you hear me? Our experienced compassion for the isolated and oppressed and discriminated. Mm -hmm. You know, that words of social distancing and isolation have been two words that I have heard uh, most frequently since the pandemic broke out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use those words as if they were totally new to us. Then uh, are they really new to us? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Uh, we human beings have a practice of one way social distancing for a long time in our mm -hmm. history. Wow. And yeah. distance the people because they were different. Distance mm -hmm. the people with the belief that my differences were better than others' ones. You know, moreover, in the cases, the social system and power supported my practice of distancing. I didn't have to feel isolated and I couldn't feel it. But now I must feel the pain of being isolated and suffer from it. You know, none of us is free from the pain of being isolated because the pandemic situation has forced all of us, all of us to be distanced and isolated. Now it is a two-way distancing. So I feel it. You feel it. We have to feel it. That being said, today couldn't be the better time to acknowledge the pain of being distanced and isolated than ever before in our human history. You know, we have realized all humans are this intimately connected to one another, regardless of any differences. My breathing can impact you and your life and vice versa, right? So we finally got to the point that we are one body, literally one body, regardless of all the differences among us. So however, sadly, it seems not all of us have learned this lesson yet. So we still see the devil, evil action of discrimination is being done in our country and in our world. So therefore, as an accountable member of this American society, 
as a conscious Christian and as a responsible pastor who loves our country and our nation so much, I sense God's call for us to make changes. I strongly believe God wants us to use our own pain of being isolated to feel others' pain of being isolated, especially the pain of the oppressed and the discriminated due to the due to their different skin colors, mm -hmm. ethnicities, gender, age, sexual orientation, socioeconomic, or family background, and mental or physical ability, you name it. So moreover, with this experienced compassion, with this experienced compassion, God wants us to do something to make changes. So this is what God has shown me in the midst of this very, very challenging time. Amen. <laughs> I hope that I answered, your, I answered your question. Everybody right? just got a second sermon and <laughs> probably a lot better than the first one. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, no, I just want to stay on that and talk more about that. But I'll, we're going to give you, you, you have a whole summer to, to expound upon that wonderful, uh, wonderful idea because I think there's a lot there that we need to unpack. Um, it's great. I think you're ex exactly right. Um, and, uh, but I, you know, we are, um, you personally are also going through a transition um, as well as we are. What's been the hardest part about leaving Belfast? Well, um, before I answer the question, you know, uh, let me tell you this. If somebody comes to me and asks me, hey, do you know, what is a Christianity? You know, tell me, you know, one sentence. Then probably I would say Christian, Christianity is all about relationships. Yeah. In a relationship with God, relationship with others, and relationship with myself, which is based on Jesus Christ's greatest commandment. You know, love God, love neighbor as yourself. So it's a relationship, you know. The congregation in Belfast, you know, uh, and I, we have been very attached, you know, emotionally and spiritually. So that's the hardest part. But also, especially uh, the, my relationship with those who, God has helped me to develop a relationship with outside the church, like my siblings in Narcotics Anonymous. You know, uh, at one point, God, I sensed that God called me not just not do programs, anything like that, but basically live with them and build a relationship with them, you know, be with them, you know. So it used to be they and I, but now I can tell it's we. You know, so it was very hard to say goodbye, you know, uh, yeah, leave them, you know. Uh, so, yeah, basically relationship. My answer would be relationship was the part that I uh, had the most hard time with. Sure, I, that makes total sense. And uh, now for the question that you can't possibly answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What are you most excited about? And coming to St. Matthew's, what have you, if there's anything that you've learned so far or anything that you're looking forward to? I believe it's the same thing, relationship. That makes me most excited, you know, but more specifically, uh, you know, when I saw that logo, whatever you call it, the logo of the church, you know, received, transformed and sent. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you know, I got goosebumps, you know. I <laughs> They just heard a bunch of it about it earlier, so. Oh, yeah. I got goosebumps, and my life-changing word, you know, mm. only the healer came into my mm. heart and mind. Yeah. And I myself was severely, you know, severely wounded years ago. At the time, Jesus Christ embraced me as I was, mm. and God healed me, you know, made me a whole again. And Jesus made me a wounded healer. So by using our church's terms, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, received me, transformed me, and sent me to witness this beautiful and powerful good news to another one who need to experience it. So, and I have uh, you guys, you know, I have you all who has the same vision as St. Matthew's UMC. So this is what makes me most excited about in coming to St. Matthew's. Wonderful. That's good. We'll keep transforming because it keeps, it's a cycle. It keeps happening again and again. And Absolutely. So we're entering a new phase here and we're excited to be transforming and 
being sent into the world to be the hands and feet of Christ uh, with you. And um, there we go. We're excited about it. So thank yep. you so much for uh, for having this little chat here with me. And uh, I hope this helps the community get to know you a little bit. But you've given us a lot here, I think, to look forward to over the course of the summer and the coming months. Um, we want to hear that story about the healing and um, your um, what, what you've been through. I think that would be a really powerful story. And um, we look forward to hearing your, your, uh, your, well, at some point, we're going to hear your whole life story, I'm imagining. <laughs> um, I believe so, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, thank you. Blessings. Appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, Josh. And thank you all. God bless you. Compassion Camp is a virtual VBS. It's an online summer day camp that you can do at home or wherever you are. It's a way for us to come together and celebrate each other and introduce that most central idea to the Christian life living a life of compassion for ourselves, each other, and the world. There will be singing and music and coloring and crafts and yoga and hopefully some dancing and some storytelling, you name it. There's going to be a lot of stuff. Some of it's going to be on Zoom, some of it's going to be recorded videos that you can watch as a family on your own schedule that day. And we will interact with each other mainly by chatting and sharing some short videos, doing a lot of art together. For local families, we'll have welcome packets that we can drop off at your house to get you started. Everybody's invited, of course. The curriculum is geared towards K through six, but there's going to be some special extras for the pre-Kers and older kids, youth and adults are all encouraged to participate as a family in this whole camp if they can. Since this is all new and we're all at home, we're making this virtual VBS free for everybody. However, we hope that in place of registration, you'll consider donating to the two causes that we selected, the Open Table and the Conscious Kid. And if you're willing to help support the VBS as well and help support our costs, that's great too. You can find all three of those things on our VBS landing page. Yes, of course, everybody can come. And the great thing about virtual VBS is that you don't have to be local to participate. Anybody can be coming. So feel free to invite family, friends, anybody who's out of state and beyond. Actually, you can still participate. You just not in the same time, but you can still watch the videos and do the activities as a family. So go ahead and register. And anyone who registers will have access to all the pre-recorded videos as well as all the recordings of the live Zoom videos. So this is a joint event between St. Matthew's Methodist and UCC Boxborough and the South Acton Church. To register, you can go to the St. Matthew's VBS landing page. And from there, you can find the donation page for Open Table and for the Conscious Kid. And then below that, you will see the form for registration. We hope you all can join us because we need more compassion, more grace, more healing, more transformation than ever right now. And so we hope this camp is a celebration for our communities, that it's a rally, that it's a call for all of us to be kind, to be loved, and to be you. All right, so that's VBS. And uh, I wanted to add a, something to that, which uh, was talking to Pastor Amy and Cindy from the Boxboro Church and from the South Acton Church uh, yesterday, and we were talking about a schedule. I think that might help you all as you're thinking about registering and working towards um, getting prepared for that, that week of July 20th. Uh, we are going to try to do a schedule of 9 to 11 a.m. for the live events. Now again, as I said in the video, if you can't make 9 to 11, it's fine, no problem. You can, later in the day, there are, the videos for the different events will be posting online and you'll be able to access those. And so you can watch them later that day, you can do those things together as a family, um, or you can do it later on. Like say you wanna do it in August, 
No problem, you can do that. So there's a lot of different ways to access this. If you wanna do it as a community and participate in some of the give and take that we'll be doing live, then show up from nine to 11 a.m. on the 20th through the 24th. Uh, but if you can't, that's okay too. And there's other ways in which we can be connected to each other that way. So this is a, a different way of doing VBS, I know. It's, it's not something that we've done before, obviously for obvious reasons, uh, but it is, I think going to be a really special opportunity and a special time. Um, there couldn't be a more relevant topic right now than the topic of compassion, the topic of how we can be kind to each other. So I hope that families will be interested in joining uh, and other people are willing to participate. You all are part of the family uh, of St. Matthew's and of family of God. So this is a family event. So again, it's free to register. If you go to the page of uh, as you saw in the video, you can. there's the donation page. You, you don't have to donate, but the idea is, since it's free, if you want to contribute some to uh, the Conscious Kid or to, uh, to open, open Table, those are opportunities for us to show that compassion in concrete ways. So I, that's, you just watched the video and now you heard more. So <laughs> you've gotten your fill of EBS. So I really hope you're hearing uh, that this is uh, that this is a great opportunity, and I hope that you all will join us um, because you all are the ones who will make it great. Um, and then I will add uh, that there is the book study that we're doing on Tuesday nights, the anti-racism anti I said that anti-racism ecumenical collaborative. Uh, I got it, I think, uh, that we're doing a, a study on the new Jim Crow, talking about uh, mass incarceration and policing. We had a great conversation last night, um, just talking about, we're still on the introduction. So if you were still wanting to learn, there's, you wanted to jump in, there's still plenty of time to get caught up. We're going to go through the book very slowly. And we are also going to talk about how to talk about these issues with each other, with others, and also how to advocate. So that will all be coming, but it's not too late to join. And uh, if you're there, we'll just email me or uh, look on the website and there's details, look on the, your weekly email, there's details there. Um, for just a reminder that we do have coffee hour, we're still doing coffee hour and it's, uh, I think it's still being hosted by Betsy, right? Um, so that is a great opportunity to chat, uh, chat and share and connect with each other here after the service. And so I'll see you there, the password's coffee hour, the link is on the website. Um, and we hope to see you there. I think that's all of our announcements. I am so thankful, so privileged to be here. I'm so privileged that uh, to be able to walk with you all in this time, this journey, and uh, we're looking forward to having Pastor Janu be with us uh, next week. Until then, let's uh, get ready for a journey. We're on a journey together, and I've got my backpack, and if you have yours, we're getting ready to journey together. We'll carry those light yokes, that love, that compassion with us as we go. Something else I sometimes carry with me on the journey is this, and I, I will readily admit I'm not Pastor Steve and I'm not Pastor Janu, but I do have one of these. So I thought I'd at least try to make use of it here since when else am I gonna get an opportunity? So I hope to leave you all with this blessing and I hope that you all have a wonderful Sunday and be at peace with each other, be at peace with the world, go in the grace and love of God. May the grace and peace of Christ be with you, my friend. Go and share 